Hi everyone and welcome back to Humankind OpenDev. So this is OpenDev Lucy scenario, which is a much bigger chunk of the game than previously. And we'll check it out. I am a little bit late to the party because this has been available for a few days now. But you know what they say, better late than never. And if you want to check out my previous Humankind videos, there will be a playlist in the video description and around here in the top right corner. So, uh, let's get started, shall we? There's not much we can change here. So, let's go. So, in the Open Dev Lucy, you can play the first 100 turns of the game, and there are four eras, if I'm not mistaken. So, I'm looking forward to seeing the new content. This is still like nowhere close to what the final game is going to be, because it's still in development. But there's Diplomacy now, for example, where previously there was none in the previous open dev scenarios. Okay, here we are. So I don't think the UI changed much. We got some notifications here. Map focus on and off. Show and hide the yields. Let's show them for now, since I'm not really familiar <laughs> with yields of every terrain type in the humankind, like I am with solization. You can turn the hex grid on or off. Cities and outposts, military forces. This will be the list of your opponents or allies. Other solizations anyway. And for anyone who's not familiar with humankind, you don't actually start with a settler, you start with a tribe, which can start an outpost, which will then turn into a city, but you don't have to do it right away. You can explore the map a little bit. For example, right here, we can make some discoveries. And this game doesn't work quite the same way civilization does. The territories are similar to Endless Legend. So you got like a predefined province that you can claim or not claim. So some people like that, others didn't. It's a matter of personal preference, I guess. Let's move in this direction, shall we? And we got some wild berries. I think we can use them a little bit later, but not right away. And this terrain looks quite a bit better, actually. Nice yields over here. Okay, well, let's not settle just yet. Oh yeah, with enough wild berries, we can get another tribe, right here. By gathering enough food, you will be able to create reinforcements. The next nomad unit will master after collecting 15 food. So you can get more units without actually starting your first settlement. Probably not a good idea to not start your first city for too long. But it's an option, and here we got... Who is this? Another tribe. I don't think I want to fight them. It would be a little bit awkward losing my only unit right at the start of the game. Probably best to avoid that. In fact, I think we should just settle over here. This is not a bad location. I might just settle right here. Might be a little bit better to settle on this tile. We got slightly better yields on the north side. Okay, so let's move over here. We'll claim this. Ancient encampment. Okay. This seems to be a pretty small province though. There's not that much land. But alright, let's claim this territory. So we can see how many resources nearby will claim with this particular location. 13 food, 7 production, 13 food, 4 production, 5 gold, 14 food, 6 production, 3 science. I don't like science. So yeah, this one looks a little bit better. I'll sacrifice 1 production to get free science. That sounds reasonable. Just need to move. There's a deer over there. We could go kill it. And another one right here. But let's get our settlement going first. 
here we go. So now we need to wait for the outpost creation. It won't be a city right away, like it is in a civilization. I will probably be making a lot of comparisons to civilization because, you know, I got several thousand hours in civilization 5 and 6 combined and it's been a large chunk of my channel for the past nine years. <laughs> so it's only natural for me to make some comparisons, all right? Okay, we got some resources there. Uh, let's attack that deer over there. More wild berries, so now I need 10 more to get another unit. And not enough movement to attack on this turn. Yeah, population gain. All right. Yeah, here we can see the outpost progress. One more turn needed. Now we can attack the deer. So you can use auto resolve now, which means for anyone who doesn't like doing manual fights, you can just use auto resolve. And for any like really easy fights, like this one, there was no need to really do that manually especially once you have quite a lot of time played in the game. And here we can see the outcome. Average unit health changed from 100 to 85%. And by average, they mean our one guy. <laughs> well, it's an average, technically. It's technically correct. The best kind of correct. Uh, chances of triggering another narrative event. Okay, that's both options. These concoctions can be powerful forces. It is their best hope. We will pray to the spirits, implore them to give her the strength to survive. Well, I don't know the outcomes of either, so uh, let's go with this option here. And we can keep exploring. Go on then. Another encampment? Do it. Yeah, I don't want to go too far away from our camp because it might need some defenses. Here's a sanctuary. We can check that out. And then... Yeah, right here. I think that worked. Yeah, it did. We got 20 food. And now we got another tribe. So now I could split them up. That's a little bit more risky if I run into anything hostile. But I can send one to keep exploring. Maybe start another outpost somewhere else. And send the other tribe back home. So that's what we're going to do. Some pretty nice yields down here. This might be a good spot to claim. I'm sure there will be plenty of good spots to claim. More wild berries. Alright, we are at 15 out of 20 already. So here's the outpost. We can relocate the outpost, but why would we want to do that? And not a whole lot else I can do right now. I can get another unit. So that's a thing I could do. But I can't turn it into a city just yet. So for now, it's just going to be an outpost. Freshwater harvest, 15 food. Okay, so we need five more in here. Let's explore to the north. See what's going on there. More stuff to grab. We move. Yes. And here's another nomadic tribe. Good to know. That's going to be our future neighbor, I assume. And yeah, we probably shouldn't be fighting a mammoth. Uh -huh. That's a bad, bad idea. Definitely not doing that. It might attack me. Modify calendar research cost by minus 25%. Okay, why not? Sure. Will we get attacked? Nope, 
yeah, I'm definitely not fighting it if I don't have to. Not with one single tribe unit. That would end poorly for us. Okay, new knowledge. Good to know. Later we rest. That notification should say uh, like what exactly you got out of it, instead of a brief pop-up on the map. Just a small observation right there. Here's some dod. Yep, another nomadic tribe. Okay then. Let's just avoid him for now. So I could get another one at the cost of one population, if I want to. I don't think I do, not right now. Let's not go too far away in case I'll need some defenses. Okay. We got 120 influence now. So influence can be spent to merge cities, claim cultural wonders, and expand your empire by placing or attaching outposts. Influence is basically what you need to expand. Okay, curiosity collected. Where do you think you're going? I might actually attack him once my other guy is back home. I don't want him messing around here. Oh wait, are we in combat already? No, we're not. New achievement for your culture. Go us. A tribe's legacy. Ah, the empire legacy trait plant lore on empire... wait, what? Okay, that sounds a bit confusing. <laughs> the wording on this sounds a little bit off. So... I assume this is a choice between plant lore, uh, wattle, and dob, and astronomy. I have no idea what that will give me, so let's go with farmers. Anything that has to do with food is usually a safe choice because growth. We earned one era star and we can now choose a new culture for our next era. So this is how humankind works. You don't pick your civilization before you start the game. You pick your culture as you play, sort of. And then you can kind of like mix them together. And there are quite a few here. The safest choice here are the Harappans because they get food basically. Food is always a safe choice because that's how you grow. And we got quite a few others, so I can go through them real quick. So these guys would be good for combat. Plus on combat strength unlocks the action buyout on the Empire. Automatically upgrades a regular outpost. And we have a unit here. A cavalry unit. Yeah, I'll just go through all of them for those of you who want to see what's actually available in this build. Because there are a lot more cultures in this build than in previous open dev scenarios. There were only a few previously. Okay, next up, modify unit production cost by minus 25%, plus 25 experience on creating unit on city or outpost, unlocks action buyout, and this is walls, special types of walls. Okay, sounds interesting. Increases movement point cost of tiles within a range of one tile for hostile armies. That sounds weird. Oh, okay, it will cost them more movement points. Right, okay, makes sense. Here we got a melee unit. Close combat unit, useful for... okay, yeah. And the champion, stronger when attacking during the first round. Right. Next, Nubians. What do we have here? Gold, basically. Pyramids. Plus two faith, plus three gold per adjacent maker's quarter. Okay. And we got archers. Can shoot above obstacles without penalties. Yeah, that sounds nice. 
Next, Olmex. More influence, basically, so that's always good if you want to expand, which you probably do. Olmec Head. Faith Food, Faith Per Adjacent River. Alright. And the Javelin Throwers. Ambusher, stronger on difficult terrain tiles. Phoenicians. Yeah, this one probably wouldn't make any sense for us because we don't really have any access to water right now. Unlocks the action buyout. Yeah, a lot of them unlock buyout. I think all of them so far that we've seen. Yeah, I wonder if any of them do not unlock buyout. Modify all constructibles buyout cost by minus 20%. Plus 2 gold per adjacent coastal water. Plus 2 gold per adjacent lake. Plus 1 trader slot. Replaces harbor. Okay, so that's like the unique district that replaces the harbor. Allows units to embark without any penalties. And we got a barim. Sounds familiar. Navigator. Damaged by consecutive turns spent in deep water. Right, that's a thing for early ships in general. Next up. Is stability. And yep, unlocks buyout. Science. We like science. So plus 3 science per religion. Plus 5 science per adjacent mountain. And plus 1 researcher slot on city or outpost. And we got... Cover the unique unit. Bonus combat strength when stability is high. Alright, next up Assyrians. Siege Masters. I like the sound of that. Plus one land movement speed on unit. Then we have plus 10 fortification, plus one combat strength in combat for units adjacent to the district. Okay. And we got Cavalry. Pillager. Generates additional money when destroying an outpost. Okay, next up, Babylonians. So, some of these were available previously, but for anyone who doesn't know them, I'll go through all of them. So, Babylonians. Plus two science per research technologies on capital. Then we have Astronomy House. Plus two food per researcher. Plus two science per adjacent farmer's quarter. And we got a Malay unit. Guardian, stronger when standing on a friendly district. Next, Egyptians. So, Grand Planners, plus one industry on the district producing industry... Wait, what? Plus one industry on district producing industry. Right, and then modify district production cost by minus 10%. Sometimes it looks like this is like the continuation of the previous sentence, but it is not. It's like a separate bonus. Egyptian Pyramid. Plus two industry, plus one influence per adjacent maker's quarter, plus one worker slot. And we got a unique ranged unit. Move and fire. Can keep moving after making an attack. Yeah, that is quite good. Then we got the Harapans, so this is always like a safe choice because they get more food, plus some food on district producing food, and plus some food on river. And then we have canal network, which is even more food. And we have runners, which is a discoverer. Generates money when collecting curiosities. Yeah, that sounds like a nice early game economy bonus. And... Have I checked this one? Yes. I think so. Yes, I did. That's what we started from. So, which one do we want to go for? I might grab the Olmex, maybe. More influence. Olmec head with some food and faith. And the javelin throwers. What else? Where was that ranged unit that ignored terrain penalties? was somewhere in here. Anything with science is also good. Okay, who had the unique range the units? Let me check real quick. Was it Nubians? I think it was Nubians. 
Yeah, can shoot above obstacles without penalties. And as the Nubians, we will get plus four gold on luxury resource deposit, plus four gold on strategic resource deposit. Okay. I kind of want to go for the Olmecs though, for the influence. And the javelin throwers also sound pretty good. There's a lot of difficult terrain, which means ambushers should be quite useful, generally speaking. And the Olmec head will give us more food. And the farmer's slot. Let's try the Olmecs. Why not? Yes, confirm. Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. All right then. So now we are in ancient era, and we are the Olmecs. Go us. So now we can turn our outpost into a city. Or at least we should be able to. Right here, city creation. So that's what we can do, right here. And now we have a city. So now, for city construction. Districts are something you place on the actual map, marked with this hexagonal icon. And usually they exploit resources that are adjacent to the tile you build them on. So for example, if I build, let's say, the farmer's quarter, and you will get told like how many resources it will exploit based on where you place it. So if I place it here, I'll get plus five food minus one production. If I place it here, I'll get plus three food, and so on. I have to place it adjacent to my city center right now, because that's my first district that I'm building. I can't place it here because that's not my territory. As in, it's not the territory of this particular city. Then we have the Olmec head. So yeah, the Olmec head is pretty good. Let's start from that. If we place it, let's say... Yeah, down here so that we don't lose anything. Plus five, plus five. I would say, let's go for this spot. Okay, sounds good. We'll build that. We can also move our population around right here. We got two population, which gives us like two dots that we can assign to food, industry, money or science. We don't want our city to grow. So right now I'm leaning towards food. We want it to grow to get more population as quickly as possible, preferably. So we could have one guy on food and maybe one on industry. That sounds reasonable. What else do we have here? Banish population, start inquisition. <laughs> Nobody expects the Olmec inquisition. And the procession. You know, I'm not sure if I want to know how an Olmec inquisition would look like. Anyhow, I think it's enough if we have one guy on food. The Olmec head will take three turns if I assign both to industry. Let's go with that because the Olmec head itself will give us more food. So now we can go and explore and maybe claim more territory as well. And we can do that with claim territory, by finding an outpost. Same exact thing that we already did previously. We'll try to find a good spot somewhere. And we also have this guy. We can maybe send him east or so. Southeast to explore that area. Anyway, and these buildings down here with a square is just city infrastructure. So these are not placed on the map, these are built inside the city. Like Granary in Civilization 6, for example. So in terms of Civilization 6, these are pretty much districts, like in Civ 6, they just work slightly differently. You can't just place them anywhere. You have to place them adjacent to your city, 
And these are just buildings inside the city. And then we got units, obviously. Anyway, now we can actually do some research. Let's go for Kalendar, because we got like a 20% bonus here, which means we'll finish it a little bit faster. This will unlock the Artisan's Quarter. And also a Granary. Okay, well, let's go for that then. And that's our turn done. Oh, well, it's already done, apparently. Okay, works for me. Oh. And we met I... our first neighbor, Assyrians. So now there's diplomacy. And we can do a few things. We can propose an alliance, which I assume will not work this early on. Not much I can do with trade right now, because we don't have anything to trade just yet. We can see our war desire and their war desire. We can see cultural proximity, which will affect relations. Your empires have a few ideological differences, making cooperation smooth and easy. The other side gains more war desire if you break treaties with them, and declaring war applies a severe war desire drain. We have attitude, which right now is hesitant. We can see our relation is deteriorating. Current superiority is at even. We can see our cultural proximity is high, which gives us a bonus. We welcome the spread of your influence. So that's a penalty. We welcome the spread of your influence. Okay, that's like about the bonus and penalty, <laughs> apparently. My archetype is cruel. And we lack trade treaties. The crisis is inactive right now. Lists all grievances occurring between your two empires. You can make demands here. So, we can trade luxuries, which right now we can't because there's nothing to trade. Trade everything, forbid new trade. So that's like our trade policy. Information sharing, share maps, reveal capital, and no information sharing. So this is what they suggested, only trade luxuries. I can accept that, I can counter or I can refuse. We have open borders, closed borders, no aggression pact and the tolerate skirmishers right now. While attacks within the other empire's borders are strictly forbidden, a blind eye is turned to fighting and raiding in neutral territory, as well as challenging trespassers. Like Let's accept. You. So now we only trade luxuries, as opposed to forbid new trade. So I think that's pretty much it right now. We can exit that screen. What do we have down here? Yeah, Empire revealed. Calendar researched. We know all that. Okay. So, right. We can fight each other right now, because skirmishers are allowed. Which means, if I want to avoid that, I would have to stay inside my territory. And I can't actually move back into my territory right now, because he is blocking me with his unit. Yeah, let's, like, move east or so. You can always try to retreat, you don't have to engage in combat if you get attacked. I want to claim this territory right here, because this looks pretty good. Let's see. So this will cost us 20 influence. We currently got 144, as you can see in the top right corner. Yeah, this looks pretty good. 10 food, 12 production, 3 science. 11 food, 14 production, 3 science. Okay. I don't want to have some science. 8 food, 16 production, 3 science. This would also be super close to our first settlement. So we can give up 3 food to get plus 2 production for now. Obviously we'll have more in the future. Or just grab this tile. It won't be a city right away, it will be an outpost initially. Now, we can open technology screen, which looks like this. Let's see how far to the right we can go. 
quite far. Okay, this is as far as we can go right now. This is all that's currently available in Open Dev Lucy. So, four eras, as you can see. This is the fourth one. Early modern, medieval, classical, and ancient. So, let's see what we can unlock here. This is our unique unit, the javelin throwers. We should probably get that. And then build a few to have some kind of decent defense, you know? That definitely sounds like a good plan. So, yep, that's what we'll do. Let's see what they are going to do. They will follow... No, they will not follow my guy. Okay. Okay. So, let's start another outpost. Let's see. I kind of like this spot right here. Yeah, I like this spot. Let's go for this one then. So we'd claim this entire territory with that outpost. As you can see, now it has a blue border. I'll just have to wait a bit to turn it into an actual city. But we already claimed it. Now we should also keep an eye on any resources. Here's another nomadic tribe. So let me turn off the yields real quick. Uh, hold on. That didn't turn them off. Yeah, right here. Oh, uh, this will show the primary type of output food industry, money or science generated by a quarter. We can turn that on. That can be useful. Not literally right now, because I didn't really build any quarters yet. But it will be useful later on. So, okay. We got saffron right here. Grants extra resources from tiles, producing the corresponding resource. Plus 5 stability on all cities. Yeah, I assume stability will be pretty important. I think the next outpost we build should be inside a province with some kind of resource. So we'll see about that. But this is a decent start. I'll probably play for this more than once. I might also stream it a little bit. We shall see. Let me know what you think so far. And leave a like if you enjoy it. That's always very helpful, especially on YouTube. And especially on the first part of anything at all. A claimed territory on our border. So they are not happy about that. And that's... The grievance. That's our grievance. Yeah, you claim the territory that is adjacent to one of my attached territories. We can defuse the situation and go back to stable diplomatic state. Or we can just ignore that. And their war desire is now at 58. Plus 3 from having more ongoing demands. It's time we dropped the demands. What does that mean? How could you think the answer would be yes? <laughs> Apparently it's a no. Nails is more worrying. I like this. Okay. So, I guess that's a no. Fine by me. We can declare a surprise war. We'll probably end up fighting them, if I had to guess. Which is why I wanted to unlock that unique unit. We'll need a few. And hey, I want to put them to good use, right? <laughs> I didn't pick the Olmecs for that unit to not build a unit. Yeah, I don't think we are ready to start a surprise war just yet. How about now? Let's explore a little bit more, but not too much more. Not that a scout will be super useful in combat. Once I finish the Olmec head, I'll probably get some unit, because we don't really have anything yet. There, carpentry researched. Now we can get the javelin throwers and also lumber yard. And we can clear forests. So let's get a javelin here. Right here. Or rather javelin thrower. Same thing, okay? There we go. 
And, well, now I can move one guy to food. Probably a good idea. And now it will delay the javelin thrower by two turns. And I would like to have at least one out as soon as possible. Because I do have a feeling we'll end up fighting them one way or the other. They are also pretty damn close to us. And if not, I will declare war on them and attack them. You know, it's preemptive defense, okay? I'm not aggressive. I would never just attack someone. I'm just defending myself. I'm a very peaceful person. As anyone who watches me play Civilization knows. As for our next research, so we unlocked a unit. We could unlock warriors and palisades. Uh, horses, okay. Animal barns. I don't think fishing would be very useful for me right now. Public fountain, flood irrigation, potter workshop, watchtower, writing. Yeah, that would take a little bit too long, maybe. Uh, let's get domestication right here. Sounds good. So, here are era stars and era goals. And one of the main way to win the game is to accumulate enough fame, which is basically right here. Whoever has the most fame when the game ends wins the game. That's one of the ways to win, at least. I assume conquering everyone is another way to win. <laughs> That's just my assumption, because if you eliminate everyone, you will obviously be the one with the most fame left, because there's nobody else. <laughs> so it makes sense, okay? And we can see, like, what we got so far, what are the goals on five territories attached to any city, including the city's territory. Have six districts built within your empire. Have ten population and or units within your empire. Earn money. Obtain technologies. And destroy military units. We can also show specific era goals. Transcend. Keep the culture you currently have for the next era. This will improve your fame gains, but your emblematic units might become a little outdated. Okay, so you have the option of keeping the culture you currently have for the next era instead of picking a new one, which will be kind of a handicap because your unique bonuses will not be well suited for the future eras, but you will get more fame by doing it. Interesting. So you can almost see this as kind of a challenge. I assume you could play through the entire game with just like an ancient era culture to accumulate more fame and finish the game just as Olmex. That would be interesting. Competitive deeds. So a list of deeds for which all empires compete and that also gives you fame. Right here. Conquer each continent. One reward per continent. Get access to every strategic and luxury resource. Build a wonder. Become a liege over a vassal empire. Build a railway line between two cities. Yeah, so there are quite a few. I won't be like reading all of them, but I'll scroll through. So that you can check them out. Complete nuclear weapons test. I like that one. Uh, can we test it on somebody else's city? <laughs> I assume so. Yeah, so this is something everyone competes for. Set foot on an... Uh, an inhabited continent. Okay then. And anything else? Competitive spirit era star. This catch up category will passively grant you era stars until you unlock the next era. It is triggered once another empire reaches the next era. Era stars will unlock faster as more empires reach the next era. Yeah, so that's fame in a nutshell. And I think this is actually a good moment to finish this first part. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about humankind so far. And leave a like if you enjoyed it. That's always very helpful and I very much appreciate it. So thanks for watching again and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.